In our first ZBrush chapter, we will create the base mesh of a stone well using some standard ZBrush techniques. We will also learn how to create Boolean objects to cut holes into our subtools, followed by how to create and edit UVW maps with the UV Master Z plugin tool. In the next three chapters of our tutorial, we're going to use the techniques from our tileable displacement maps and texture maps and in order to displace and create this stone well that you see here. And then I'm going to show you some techniques within ZBrush and Keyshot to get this final image. And we're going to be able to do this pretty quickly. And uh, here you go. You can see kind of what this will look like in ZBrush. Ours will probably vary a little bit. And again, we're just going to be using these different displacement maps that will be included with the tutorial that you'll be able to get to the displace, back, and etc. So anyways, let's get started. We're going to jump over into ZBrush. And one thing I like to do whenever I open up ZBrush is I'll go here to New Document, fill out my screen space, and then I change my range. I like to have a solid background color, so I just always put this down to zero so it's gray in the background. So let's grab a cylinder. We're going to drag this out. This is going to become our well eventually. And let's press T so we can actually transform this. And then make Poly Mesh 3D. So now this is an actual active um, object that we can work with. And I'm going to subdivide this a little bit and then I'm going to DynaMesh this. So when I'm subdividing this, by default you can see that Smooth is always turned on. And if we start to subdivide, you can see that the edges, because we didn't have support on the edges, it starts to curve around. And I want to keep that a little bit tighter, so I'm going to undo those subdivisions, turn off the default Smooth one, and I'm going to divide. You'll notice this is 482 points, so we divide, and now it's uh, divided but the edges didn't change. This just divides things without changing any of the underlying topology. So now we have the smooth, we'll turn that back on and we get a little bit of the subdivision here. And I think this is a little better because it keeps it tighter for the purposes of what I'm going to do. And then um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna delete lower before I DynaMesh this. So let's come down here to DynaMesh. Let's click this just with the default settings. And before I do that, let's take a look with Shift F at our topology. Originally this had a point in the center which doesn't give us some nice topology through here So that's why we're going to DynaMesh this So we DynaMesh that and now we have really nice clean topology all the way through here So let's press shift F again And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this mesh down And this is going to become our cutter object the bottom one and what I mean by that is we're going to scale this down and make it so that we can cut out a hole in the top of this well because if you have a well you need to be able to have a hole in order to get the water and bucket down through the center and we get to learn how to use boolean cutter objects within zbrush so this bottom one you can see by default there's these different icons selected so let's click this one it looks like two circles penetrating one another and this will make the bottom one a cutter object the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here to polygroups and we're going to say group as dynamesh sub and that's gonna allow this to be able to subtract once we get ready to actually cut and merge. But first what we need to do is change the scale of our cutter object. So let's go and press W to go to our move tool. Well, our move transform tool up here. By the way, you can press W, E, and R to switch between these. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna non-uniform scale this by clicking here and you can drag up and down. You can see it's non-uniform scaling. If you hold down the shift key, it's going to lock this to the axis. And you're going to hear me using that a lot. The shift key always allows you to kind of do things um, snap to an orthographic view, which is extremely helpful for precision maneuvers. Next thing we need to do is let's scale this down a little bit. We'll kind of eyeball it, try to get towards the center. We're going to drag this out again. We're going to press E to go to the scale mode. And here, this will just allow us to uniformly scale this down. And again, think of this as the cutter object in this top part is going to be the top of our well. I'm going to go back to our move mode, move this over, kind of center it. And if we look here, I think this will be pretty good in terms of the top of the well size. So I'm going to snap back to our orthographic view and let's click this and that'll make this go to our down angle. This is kind of cool in your transfer mode. You can always click these different angles to snap to these different directions. Really useful. So we're going to move this down a bit because we want to be able to cut all the way through this object. So I'm going to press, uh, well, we press W to RGB move mode, and this center one is going to allow us to move this down. It allows us to move it all over the place. But again, I'm going to hold down shift because I want to lock that to the orthographic view axis. And now that it goes all the way from the bottom to the top all the way through, we can actually cut all the way through this. 
So the next thing we need to do is our top object. This is the one that's going to become our displaced well. We're going to merge this down, making sure that again, this bottom one has the center subtract uh, node there. I don't know exactly what that's called, but um, you'll see it's important to have that. So let's go ahead and click Merge Down. And once we're merged down, now what we want to do is just simply click, hold down Control, and then click and drag on the side here. And now you can see that it actually boolean and cuts that out. Pretty cool. And the other thing that's pretty awesome about that too, for those of you who know how polygroups work, if we press Shift F right now, you can see that it puts a different polygroup on the interior, which is pretty useful for one of the next steps we're going to be doing where we create UVW mapping for this. But before we um, lay out our UVs, which is our next step, one thing that I like to do is anything that we're not going to be able to see, like geometry that don't need to have, I like to delete it because I don't want to have wasted topology and limitations on how many times I can subdivide this. So for example, you remember a minute ago we were looking at this different uh, images. Down here we're going to make a snow drift eventually, so at the bottom of this we're not going to need to see any topology. So let's go ahead and uh, make a new mask group by pressing control and then dragging this on the bottom. And with that mask activated we're going to press control W and now you can see we have a new um, subgroup down here or polygroup. And we're going to go ahead and delete that out. And the way we can do that is by control shift clicking this. So control shift click, or actually we need to get out of the move tool. So let's press B to go to a standard brush. Let's clear our mask by um, just control click dragging out here. That'll clear our mask. And that'll also uh, redo your Dynamesh if you're not careful. But uh, let's do control shift click and click it again. And now what we want to do is go to geometry. I'm going to turn off this Dynamesh so that it's not active anymore. And let's go to Modify Topology and Delete Hidden. Now that we've done that, there's no topology down here and we won't have to worry about wasting unnecessary topology. I think that's just a thing that kind of sticks with me from working in a production pipeline for so long. But once you get into the millions of polygons in uh, ZBrush, it can save memory as well as give you better performance by not having as much topology, especially in places where you don't need to see it. Just a good rule of thumb. So let's press Shift F so that we're just seeing the uh, framed image here, the regular subtool. And let's uh, smooth this interior out just a little bit by holding down the Shift key. You can smooth that. But let's undo that and let's press X to activate symmetry. Now you can see the point on both sides. And this will just save us a little time. So now let's press Shift. And we're dragging that around the side so we can smooth that out. Cool. And let's turn off symmetry again by pressing X. Now it's deactivated. Next thing we want to do is we're going to create some UVW maps for this. And for those of you that know how to use UVW maps and all that kind of thing, it's basically like setting our canvas for the well. And remember that we have those um, maps from earlier that are kind of these elongated pieces. So in a minute here, you're going to see me make UVW maps that kind of match a rectangular shape that's similar to this. And that's going to be important for us when we're displacing. And sorry for those of you that are pros have been doing this a while. I'm probably telling you a lot of stuff you already know. But uh, I imagine we have a lot of ZBrush beginners and whatnot, so it's good to go over all the basics. So let's go to the Z plugin. We're going to drag it over here to the side. Expand UV Master. And since we have some polygroups in here, we want to basically this will allow us to unwrap and automatically create UVs in ZBrush. And ZBrush's relaxing algorithms are really, really good. And by default, symmetry is turned on, but I'm not worried about that. What I do want to have is to activate polygroups, and that's going to allow me to separate UV islands based on the polygroups that we have. So, for example, right now it would we create two: one for the interior and one for the exterior. However, we're not going to get a good relax on the exterior cylinder if we still have the top part connected. So let's make another uh, polygroup right here. We're going to once again hold down the control key, drag out a mask, and now we have a mask activated. And let's say control W, and that's just the hotkey again for making a new mask. And even though it's the same color, it technically is a different polygroup. You can uh, double check that by doing control shift clicking. And indeed, we do have three different polygroups. So now, Let's go ahead and use the magic of the unwrap tool with the polygroups activated and just hit unwrap. It'll take a minute here. You can see at the top. All 
And it's good to do this without too much topology. Like once you get up into the millions of polys, you can crash ZBrush depending on what type of graphics card that you have, etc., and how much RAM. So anyways, it's good to lay out your UVs before you do lots of subdivisions. So let's check this out. Let's go to Flatten. And now you can see the flattened view of our mesh based on this kind of squared UV coordinate system. And it's already laid out pretty nicely where, remember the way that we have the bricks, or sorry, stones laid out horizontally? It'll kind of play on here really nicely. However, and this is a little bit crooked and it's honestly not the best use of all our UV space. And I want to show you guys a cool thing that a lot of people don't know about. So in ZBrush, um, even in this view, you can adjust the UVs. So these are separate poly groups. So let's um, control shift click this one and that'll isolate just this guy. And then we're gonna press W to go to the move mode just to get the transform tool. Let's drag that out and let's go to R and we're gonna rotate this a bit because we wanna straighten that out. And then we'll just kind of move this over. Control shift click this. And let's move this. And this one I think is going to be pretty good. It'll flow along with our UVs pretty nicely. We're going to control shift click this one and move this guy down too. And let's rotate this one just a bit as well. We're going to drag out a new piece and then, oops, make sure it's not on scale. And here we go. We got this rotated nicely. So now we got some nicely laid out UVs going in this direction. So let's unflatten this. And let's take a look at how this looks with our texture map on top. Because I just want to make sure this is actually working nicely. So let's press Shift F and let's minimize this. Let's go down to texture map and let's click this to bring in a new texture. Let's say import. And basically uh, what you want to do is you can dig up the maps, either the ones that you created on your own or the ones I included with the um, uh, Gumroad tutorial. And we can come here and let's just pick the stone wall pattern diffuse. Let's click that one, press open. And now you can see it's actually on the object. The problem is, is that stuff looks a little bit stretched, well, a lot stressed, uh, stretched out in this angle. Plus it might be kind of cool to get some of the bigger stones towards the bottom. So what we can do is let's flatten this out again. And we're gonna take everything and we're gonna rotate them all. So let's, uh, sorry, we'll clear this. Let's drag this down and let's rotate all of these. And as we're rotating them, again, we can hold down the shift key to lock it orthographically and snap to angles, which is super useful. And now we're gonna move this down. And actually that's what we had before, huh? So let's, um, let's re-rotate that again. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do, since this was non-uniform scaling a bit, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this the right way or not. It might be trial and error, but uh, let's non-uniform scale these UVs down because right now they're um, relaxed perfectly, which is awesome. However, we're going to make this work with our our maps that we already have. So let's see what happens with this. Unflatten, and that's really, really stretched. So let's flatten it one more time, and what we need to do is stretch it the other way. Okay, we'll go something like that. Let's unflatten one more time. And now we have something that's looking pretty good. But again, we still have our big ones up top. So one more time, let's flatten this. And now we have something that's working pretty nicely. So we got some smaller polygons up top and then some bigger ones on the bottom. So let's go ahead and wrap this chapter up, but you get the idea of how we can quickly create the base meshes and all this kind of stuff. And the next thing we're gonna do is actually displace this. So I'll see you in just a second in the next chapter. If you like this video, the entire tutorial is available for free on Gumroad. Click the yellow Gumroad pop-up box below and you can download all five HD videos for this tutorial series. Additionally, I've included everything that I demonstrate in the project, such as the maps that you see here, like this diffuse, displacement, spec map, and even my bump map. And then in addition to that, I've also put my ZBrush file in here, 
that you guys can open up and use. And finally, I've uh, included the Keyshot file. So whether you want to create everything yourself or use my maps and files to follow along, everything's absolutely free. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching these tutorials, and I hope you learned a few valuable tricks. Until next time.